How is a driving test marked? How does an examiner come to the conclusion when it comes to marking the results? And how does a driver fault or a minor fault become a serious? On numerous occasions, I get asked by my pupils, was that a fault? Is that a fault? How would this be perceived on my driving test? Would it be marked as a serious? And my answer generally always comes back to the same thing. What's the risk? What was the risk associated with what you've done wrong? When you commit a fault, the examiner has to ask themselves two questions. One, what would I have done in that situation? And two, what was the level of risk? But unfortunately, when it comes to driving, there are huge amounts of gray area. Not everything can just be marked down simply as this or that. So therefore, there's always gonna be an element of judgment. And then you've got to think about what is the potential for risk. I had a pupil not that long ago. She had done her lessons with a previous instructor. She had failed the driving test and she said she had failed it based upon a potential. Whatever she did would potentially lead to something serious. She couldn't get ahead around it. So what does a potential fault or potential risk actually mean? Potential risk would be simple. Let's say, for example, you're doing a reversing maneuver and you don't do any blind spot checks. If you're not doing any blind spot checks and there isn't anybody there, then nothing physically has happened, but the potential for risk is incredibly high. Well, you're turning left or you're turning right and you're not doing mirror checks. The potential for risk is going to increase the longer you do this. Or you emerge from a junction a little bit too quickly and now all of a sudden the potential for that, if you did that on a different day, is again really high. So we really have to pay attention to the potential risks. They're fundamentally important. When you are doing your driving lessons, the buck stops with your instructor. When you are doing your driving test, the buck stops with the examiner. When you have passed your test, the buck stops with you. Until that point, we share the responsibility of the risk. And then when you get your license, that responsibility to risk is all yours, all yours to bear. And I kind of wish the DVSA would mark things in a different way. It would just make things so much easier. I, I don't think that's gonna happen anytime soon. But if we start to look at it like this, there are four ways that we look at risk. We've got not noteworthy. So whatever it is that you've done is not noteworthy. The risk was so low that it, it's really nothing to be considered. The next would be low risk, which would ultimately be a driver fault. And this is a driver fault for controlled brake. Oh. A driver fault being a minor fault. Then you've got medium risk, which would then be moving into the serious. But unfortunately, this learner driver ignores the road opposite and picks up a serious fault for observations at junctions. And the high risk, which was either going to be serious or dangerous. Just, just. But the problem with the mindset is that whenever you go into your driving test, all you're thinking about is mistakes. What mistakes am I going to make? Instead of standing back and then looking at whichever scenario has occurred or whatever that's gone wrong and then associating risk to it, we think about the fault, what I've done wrong, rather than what's riskier, what's less risky. If you change your mindset and start to look at it from that perspective, all of a sudden it becomes much more manageable. And every pupil that I work with, that I talk about risk with, they get it. Start to look at faults as risk. I hope this video has been of value to you. If it has, hit the like button, subscribe if you want more content, and I'll see you in the next one. Get well out.